A federal judge has temporarily suspended South Carolina's new pro-life law, which bans abortions after a baby's heartbeat can be detected. That can happen as early as six weeks into a pregnancy. South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster signed the heartbeat bill into law last week after it passed the state house, but the bill was not met without debate. The Democratic caucus will not be with you today. Mr. Speaker, for that reason, the Democratic caucus is not going to participate in this farce of a vote about pretend life. South Carolina's Democrat state representative staged a dramatic walkout during last week's House debate over the pro-life heartbeat bill. All but two House Democrats voted against it. But also last week, there was moving testimony on the House floor in support of the bill, particularly from State Representative Melissa Lackey Aramis, who shared her pro-life witness. When I was in high school, I was at the top of my class doing what teenagers do, maybe had a little fun one night, too much, and uh, found myself with child. All my friends that were you know, around me said, have an abortion. My, I went to that first ultrasound appointment and I heard that little sound that you hear, that fast 150 beat a minute little sound, a whipping noise. That sound to me was proved to me that I had a human being inside of me. She chose life for her baby daughter, who today is a 25-year-old woman and college graduate. Joining us now on Skype for this week's Pro-Life Focus is South Carolina State Representative Melissa Lackey Aramis. Melissa, welcome and wow, powerful testimony about how you were pregnant at 16 years old. Here we are today. You're obviously a successful woman, a state representative. What's your message to young women who also find themselves in an unplanned pregnancy and who may think finding success won't be possible? Hey, thank you for having me. I just really want girls to know, young girls that find themselves pregnant, to know that abortion should not be an option. Um, your life is going to be a little bit harder, harder. with a baby. Um, it's going to make you have to work a little harder, but you can do it. And, you know, abortion should not even be an option. We should not even say, you know, give someone an option to, to do an abortion. If you know, you just have to let them know that there's other options out there, you know, and that includes adoption. Mm. You shared about choosing life for your daughter after hearing her heartbeat. South Carolina's heartbeat law is currently suspended, but why do you think this law is important for women? Um, I think it's important because we need to quit just saying that it's about women's health care. And we are, you know, we're taking a woman's right to choose a way so she can have all these health care. If, if I had a doctor tell me that I needed to abort my child, he wouldn't be my doctor anymore. So it's important for women to know that there's other options out there. We, we do not have to, to end it this way. So for South Carolinians, we wanted to let the world know that we stand up for life here. And I just pray that our court systems um, will follow suit in the Supreme Court. It was a very personal testimony you shared on the South Carolina House floor last week. Was that difficult to share and why did you ultimately decide it was important to do? I was not prepared. Um, I didn't have anything written down, but I just decided to tell my story. Um, I just prayed about it the night before and said, I think just telling who I am might be a better testimony than having all these things written down. So I, I, like I said, I didn't have anything planned and it just came out the way it did. And I did not realize it was going to touch and inspire so many women. So many people have reached out to me saying they wish they had had me in their corner, um, championing them along the way um, so they wouldn't have had to make that decision. So that's been pretty powerful. And tell us about your daughter today. I understand she 25 year old, 25 years old yes, now. She is. Wow. Tell us about yes, her. Yes, she is. She now, like I said, she's a college graduate. She's living in New York City and loves it there. She's a very independent woman. She's an entrepreneur. She um, is in fashion field and she is planning to launch a swim line come this spring. So we're very proud of her. She is um, headstrong like her mom. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but she has watched, watched me along the way and, and be an independent person. And so 
I'm very proud of the Christian strong woman she is today. Mm, your speech did get a lot of attention. What's your message to people who think the heartbeat bill and pro-life laws are anti-woman? Um, I, I really want women to stop saying that. Um, people keep saying to me, you had a choice, you had a choice. Really, I didn't. I, um, I wish nobody would have ever spoke those words to me, but I don't want women to think that's their only option. There should not be an option. Um, when two people consent to um, have sexual relations and a baby comes to be part of it, then there there is no um, second guess in that. That's a life inside of you, and God placed it there, and it's up to you to take care of that responsibility. So I, I don't even think abortion should be an option, and so we can just end that conversation altogether. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for your vulnerability and sharing your own personal witness and for your courage. South Carolina State Representative Melissa Lackey-Aramis, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.